my name. It's very strange. It does not match my face. Joel Kim Booster. Why? You know? Joel up top there, that seems pretty Jewish. Doesn't make any sense at all. Kim in the middle, that seems closer. Uh, and then Booster right there at the end. Well, that's just a word. <laughs> that's a, it's not a name at all. What's happening there? And the reason I have this very goofy name is, yes, I was adopted by a nice white Midwestern couple in the mid-80s, like many Korean babies were. Um, Korea in the mid-80s, if you were around, you probably remember, it was the only country that would fly a baby to the U.S. and you didn't have to go and pick it up. So it was, uh, it was very much the grub hub of babies back then. Uh, it was delivered by a very grumpy man on a bike. Uh, Forgot my mom's Pepsi, wouldn't go back for it. It was a disaster. Uh, so as you can imagine, it was a little weird growing up in the Midwest with this face and that family. I mean, I literally knew I was gay before I knew I was Asian. Uh, yeah. it, uh, it actually came as quite a shock when I finally found out. I'm what? You know, like... Uh, but it's weird, too, to me, because we talk so much in this country about how, like, the South is the most racist part of our country, but I can tell you with full authority that the Midwest is just as racist as the South. It just has none of the personality, you know? Like, <laughs> it's all the hatred and violence, but no sweet tea, you know? So, <laughs> what's the point? Uh, <laughs> there you go. Oh, stop it. Um, I'll get to the West Coast eventually, don't worry. Um, yeah, it's uh, strange. I was, it was very difficult for me growing up in that environment because I don't meet a lot of, like, cultural expectations of what an Asian person should be in this country, you know? Like, I'm terrible at math. I don't know karate. Um, my dick is huge, you know? So it's just like, oh, like, constantly, constantly disappointing white people. Um, Terrible. I actually don't know if it's that big or not because every time I look at it, it's pixelated. So it's really, it's anyone's guess. Okay. okay, good. Some perverts in the audience. That's nice, you guys. I'm single too. Um, been single for a while now. My friends, they try to help me out. They give me a lot of advice. They're always like, Joel, like, don't be so thirsty. Don't be so desperate. Like, play hard to get. That's the one that I hear the most. Play hard to get which is very difficult for me to do because I'm very easy to get. Um, very sexually gullible. I've been tricked into a lot of situations. Uh, it's bad. I'm so available that in the last calendar year, this is 100% true, I have been stood up by three different men on three different first dates. Um, yeah, I know, it sucks. Um, I think like the hardest part about that for me, though, is just not knowing how those men died, you know? Like, what? <laughs> happened to that? <laughs> was it a grease fire or some sort of, you know, animal attack? It's the not knowing that hurts the most, really. Uh, so I was a pretty gay kid growing up, um, which is actually like a ridiculous premise for a joke. Many gay comedians have this premise, but what does that actually mean? Because have you guys ever met a six-year-old? They're all hella gay, you know? Like, I don't know what criteria we're using to project our expectations of sexuality onto a child, but there's not a six-year-old in this country crushing puss right now, all right? Like, it just, it doesn't happen, so. Oh, but for the sake of uh, my joke, I was pretty gay, um, and it was never more apparent than Christmas 1996. I wanted what every little boy in the nation wanted for Christmas. You guys know what it is. The Crimp and Curl Pony by the Cabbage Patch Company! My mom was super cool. She got it for me. I opened it up on Christmas morning. I just started crimping and curling right away. Um, my dad, less enthused, he looked at my mom and he was like, Janet, what the hell, like, why would you get him this girl's toy? This is a toy for girls. And my mom looked at my dad and was like, well, Ken, my brother Bob, he used to get baby dolls for Christmas, and now he's a pediatrician, so. <laughs> Case closed. And my dad, like, rightfully looked at my mom and was like, what the hell do you think he's gonna be, a fucking horse hair stylist? Like, <laughs> what's the end game here, Janet? And, you know, I, I remember my dad saying that, and I remember thinking, is that a profession? Is that something that I can do? Like, does it require a certificate? Like, give me the full story, Dad! All right, I'm Joe Kim Booster. Thank you so much.